Let's look at the Lewis structure for ethene, C2H4. The total valence electrons are 12. These electrons come from four valence electrons for each carbon atom and one valence electron for each hydrogen atom. You'll notice that ethene does not have one central atom like we've seen in earlier videos. In ethene, like we saw in ethane in an earlier video, we see a short chain of carbon atoms. We'll draw the two carbon atoms and draw the connection between the two carbon atoms. The connection here is a covalent bond or a shared pair of electrons. Of the 12 valence electrons, we've used two for this connection. And so there are 10 valence electrons remaining. Next, we'll add the hydrogen atoms to the outside of the chain. Recall, hydrogen atoms can only form one covalent bond. Therefore, hydrogen atoms can only be on the outside of a chain. But there's only four hydrogen atoms, so we'll evenly distribute the hydrogen atoms between the two carbon atoms. Symmetry is generally most stable in chemistry. Asymmetry will generally result in formal charges, and there are zero formal charges in ethene. Checking our valence electrons, we can count 2, 4, 6, 8 valence electrons used. This means there are 2 valence electrons remaining. Interestingly, each carbon atom only has 6 valence electrons. Recall, carbon atoms are most stable when they follow the octet rule. I'll draw the final pair of electrons on one of the carbon atoms. And notice there are zero electrons remaining. But the other carbon atom only has six valence electrons. As we saw in the rules for drawing Lewis structures, we can move a lone pair of electrons between neighboring carbon atoms if we need to satisfy the octet rule. So we'll do that here. So we can redraw this structure showing the two bonds between the carbon atoms. Now we see the double bond there are two shared pairs of electrons between the carbon atoms, and each carbon atom has four bonds, or eight valence electrons, which satisfies the octet rule.